Good evening ladies and gentlemen welcome to Triple N Media this is a covid-19 pandemic special presentation in this presentation we are going to be talking about how does convalescent plasma transfusion work does it save lives first let us look at the historical precedents Convalescent plasma transfusion is nothing new. It has been used for more than a century. In the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic where several million people died, plasma was taken from people who had recovered from the the Spanish flu and transfused that to people who were deathly sick to help them recover from the flu. it was also used during the ebola scare people who were exposed to the ebola virus donated their plasma for those patients who were having symptomatic ebola virus how does the plasma work how does it help let us dig a little deeper into the concept of antibodies the body is full of antibodies that's how we fight viruses that's how we fight infections that's how we fight our everyday flu why do we to take flu vaccination flu vaccination stimulates the body to produce antibodies against a particular strain of virus and hopefully you get uh, very mild symptoms if at all you get infected by the virus anyway getting back to the covid-19 infection as we know usually when you are exposed to the covid-19 virus it it takes 1 to 2 weeks uh, to develop symptoms by the time you begin to have symptoms our body is already producing antibodies the immediate response is uh, to produce igm which is the antibody that is the first one to be produced to fight against the virus as time lingers on and as the virus begins to multiply more and more then the body begins to produce what is known as the igg antibodies and these antibodies can last a longer time the igm that is produced by the body is not very specific to that particular virus it may be able to fight that virus but it is not specific and it some it can also last up to 2 to 4 months based on based on the mayo clinic website the igg on the other hand is more specific to a given virus in this case the corona virus this lasts for several months and we are all familiar with the flu vaccine which i just talked about why do we take flu vaccine every year because the immunization lasts only for so many months after that we had to take the flu vaccination again and we take the flu vaccination again because there may be new strains of virus compared to what we had the previous years so that's why it is important to get the vaccination for that particular specific agent which may be the one most likely to cause the infection in case of a flu okay let's get back to corona virus 99 infection that's what we are interested in okay does everybody produce antibodies that's the next question and here is a, an interesting study that was reported in the clinical infectious disease on march 28 by dr jao who showed that those people who were admitted to the hospital with symptoms within the first 7 days 29% of them had the igm antibodies to the virus and about 20% of them had this long term antibody namely the igg and by about 2 weeks 94% of the people had igm and about 80% of the people had igg this might also explain why 80% of the people are mildly symptomatic or have no symptoms and as we know only about 20% of the people develop symptoms and only 5% of them become critical and 1 to 2 or 3% percent 
mortality is generally the number that we see and of course the sicker patients have more medical problems they are older and their immune system is not as robust as it is in children nonetheless by about 4 weeks most of the people should have antibodies both IgM and IgG and hence these people will be able to donate plasma for those patients who are really sick in the hospital who are on ventilators and on multiple medications and remember as i have said these antibodies that are produced against the corona virus is the only real specific treatment that we have to offer to these patients with corona virus because everything else is not really geared to attack the corona virus anyway so how many laboratories are producing these uh, tests that can detect these antibodies very few and if you look at there are so many laboratories that have popped up to diagnose the virus but there are very few that can detect the antibodies that's a sideline let's move on to the real issue how do we actually accomplish a plasma transfusion now let's say you have a patient who has been exposed to the corona virus and had symptoms this patient recovers and this patient body has developed igg and igm antibodies now we can take the plasma the liquid part of the blood that's all we are interested in because the igg and the igm antibodies circulate in the blood we don't need the red blood cells like we use red blood cells for people who are bleeding whereas here all we need is the plasma this is how it looks and it is all grouped based on the blood groups one once we take this plasma and transfuse that into a patient who is really sick that patient will have antibodies the next question is how do we know that patient has antibodies well there are tests we can do to measure the level of igg and igm that are specific to the corona virus in the patient who received the blood tra the plasma transfusion and we'll talk about that in a minute what is the best time to give the plasma transfusion if you look at all over the social media people are announcing please 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 somebody donate plasma one of our loved ones are sick they have been on the respirator for 5 days if you look at this graph here and if you look at this chart it will tell us clearly what is the optimal time to use plasma if at all we are going to use as i said within the first 14 days to 21 days your body should be able to produce these antibodies to fight the infection but if your body is not able to fight the infection because it cannot produce antibodies or because we have multiple comorbid conditions where your overall health condition is very poor then your body is not able to fight the virus which can lead to a more advanced case of infection destruction of the lung tissue which will eventually lead to a ventilator dependency so the way to look at is in the early stages of the corona infection when you realize that you are requiring more and more oxygen to support the patient's blood oxygen level and when the patient's uh, oxygen level drops or if if the cat scan shows Uh, these pneumonia like patches the earliest sign of which you see that may be the right time to give these patients plasma transfusion before they go on the ventilator hoping that we can prevent them from getting on the ventilator by looking at these charts that's what is uh, reflected here but a lot of times patients get the plasma when their condition has advanced quite a bit it would still help in those patients but the recovery is going to be pretty long and protracted so the time to do is early giving plasma transfusion is like prevention of 
coronavirus infection getting widespread. All right, how many units of plasma are actually needed? There are studies which have shown that even with one unit of plasma, 200 ml of plasma, they have shown they can detect antibodies uh, in a very high dilution. That means there is significant amount of antibodies in the plasma enough to fight the coronavirus infection but it is better if we give it earlier than later and let's look at a couple of studies you know all talk and no evidence is worthless here is a study from Wuhan reported by Dr. Shen he looked at only five patients and all of these patients were on ventilators their temperatures normalized in three days their viral load became negative in 12 days and their antibody levels went from 40 to 60 all the way to 80 to 320. So as I said, their antibody levels go up, the viral load becomes less, their symptoms get better and these are all people who have been on ventilators for several days. Imagine if you were to transfuse these patients in the early stages of their decompensation, you can expect much better results. Three of them were taken off their ventilators and two of those patients were stable. And here's the next study which looked at 10 patients reported by Dr. K. Don, again from Wuhan province. They just used one unit of convalescent plasma, that is 200 ml. It produced significant increase in antibody titers the disappearance of viremia or the virus in the body in seven days, the clinical symptoms improved in three days. They showed radiological improvement in the CAT scans of the chest, which I'm going to show you in a minute. And in the same study, they saw some of the inflammatory markers came down and their liver function test improved. And here is a dramatic example of a CAT scan before the plasma transfusion in a mild case and a severe case. And as you can see, there are big infiltrates here. And after giving the plasma transfusion, there is a remarkable improvement in the CAT scan. Even in patients with far advanced infiltrates in lung fields, still it can make a difference, but it will not be as dramatic as you would see in patients who are in the early stages of this uh, infiltrates in the lungs or patches. So where do we go for help? The best place to start is the FDA. Why do we need to go to FDA? FDA has to approve this plasma transfusion. Any physician can request an FDA approval. As an individual, if you are in a small town, you can visit this FDA, FDA website, which is listed here. You can apply for an authorization for transfusing plasma in your patient in a small town. Yes, you can get the authorization within a few hours, generally within less than 24 hours from what I have seen on their website. You can just treat one patient or more patients. And of course, of course you have to submit records to the FDA. So ladies and gentlemen, here is the website that not only gives you authorization to use plasma transfusion, but also gives a ton of information about uh, how to check for patient eligibility, how to collect uh, plasma, how to label this, uh, what record keeping is required. Everything is spelled out on this website. If you are thinking about uh, using plasma transfusion for your patients, uh, I think the best time to do is just in the early stages of their decompensation, in the early stages of this development of uh, multiple patches on the CAT scan. And of course, the place to visit will be the FDA site for coronavirus convalescent plasma. Thank you so much for watching this presentation. Hopefully this has given you some insight about what plasma transfusion and how to accomplish that in your small town on a single patient or more than one patient. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and we will see you next time. And Dr. Nick Nickham.